Good afternoon and welcome to Prime Meridian, your weekly window to the world. I'm Amrit Pal Singh. This is a show on which we look at what happened in the week uh, going by and what we could expect the coming week to look like. Let's begin with the euro crisis. Well, George Washington once said that someday following the example of United States of America, there will be a United States of Europe. Perhaps he did not envision that market forces could unravel that Europe. There is a fear, though, that the single currency, the euro used by 17 nations in Europe, may suffer if one of its users, which is currently Greece, stops using it. Let's take a look at that in this report. The eurozone is at a crossroads. It either has to make up or it is looking at a potential breakup. Risk to the recovery stems from the difficulties facing the euro area. I'm assessing even today the weight of the obligations which our country faces. Europe is on a brink of crisis, and this crisis threatens to engulf the entire financial world. The center of this crisis is a tiny nation in southern Europe, Greece. After a 10-day-long stalemate, it's back to first for Greece. In the 10-day-long period, the Greek president tried to persuade parties from right to left to form a coalition government, but lengthy talks ended in a deadlock. The radical left-wing bloc, which strongly opposes austerity, was not ready to join any party which supports austerity. The left-wing bloc wants to renegotiate the $130 billion bailout package with the troika of lenders, that is the EU, ECB and the IMF. The uncertainty has pushed the country further towards bankruptcy and a possible exit from the Eurozone. We shouldn't have reached this point. We are forced to go. Let's go united in the best way to safeguard Greeks. Let's move towards something better. And for God's sake, let's not move towards something worse. The democratic left did everything possible. I did everything I could for the 6% of the population that honored me with its vote, with a deep awareness of the interests of the country and the population, in order for the country not to resort to elections. Ninth May's election in Greece left the parliament split over a 130 billion euro bailout package, which has led to deep wage, pension and spending cuts. A new election will be held on 17th of June, and Greece is in the mind of every policymaker in Europe. It has already shortened the honeymoon period of this man, François Hollande. France's first socialist president in 17 years, who was sworn in this week. His inauguration comes as fears increased that Eurozone is heading towards a crisis and Greece could leave the single currency. But he alone can't save Europe. He needs the help of this lady, German Chancellor Angela Merkel. François Hollande travels straight to Berlin after his inauguration to talk on Eurozone's mounting problems. We want to work together for the good of Europe, but we also want to mobilize all of the other countries of Europe. I also wanted to come talk to the Chancellor about our work for the coming weeks and months. We know the responsibility we have as Germany and France for the good development of Europe, and I think in the nature of this spirit, we will find the solutions for the individual problems. But it won't be easy. Hollande has called for growth, while Angela Merkel sees austerity as the pill for all ills of Europe. The France's finance minister has already said that his government won't sign the fiscal pact which calls for tighter spending. This will worry Berlin. Angela Merkel and François Hollande may not be best friends yet, but they need to show a united front as fears increase about Eurozone falling apart. Meanwhile, the financial markets remain rattled. The euro fell to a four-month low to a dollar on Tuesday. There are concerns that Athens' troubles could spread to Spain and Italy. Bad debts have been piling up in Spanish banks. This has caused the rating agency Moody's to downgrade 16 Spanish banks. All the 16 banks' long-term debt ratings were downgraded by at least one notch, and some suffered three notch cuts. But time is running out. Greece only has enough money for next few weeks and it won't get the next bailout until a new government takes charge and stands by previous austerity promises. That is now looking less likely. Polls predict anti-bailout leftists will win a repeat election, fueling speculation that Greece will exit from the Eurozone. 
and if Greece exits from the Eurozone, unraveling of Eurozone could take place. Sidhan Sibal's report, DD News, New Delhi. And to discuss the situation, I'm joined in the studio by Ambassador Rajiv Sikri. Uh, so thank you for being on the show. I'm, uh, I'm also joined uh, from the newsroom by our correspondent, Sadan Sibyl. Uh, Sadan, first, let me come to you. You filed that report. You've been following this euro crisis for a while now. Now, what happens? June 17th is the election slated for uh, Greece. Uh, your report says they just have money for a few weeks left. Uh, the government, uh, the EU doesn't know whom to negotiate with because there is a government in place which doesn't really have the negotiating pass uh, for the next uh, tranche of the bailout. Now, what happens in the immediate uh, future? Well, uh, let me start by giving the whole picture how this crisis erupted. Greece is a very small country in southern Europe. It was running high on debt. Uh, well, uh, since it was running on high on debt, a troika of lender ECB, EU and IMF said they'll, get, they'll bail out the country. There were two bailouts. The first was the $110 billion bailout. After This bailout cannot actually couldn't save uh, Greece. So they came with another bailout of 130 billion euros. Uh, meanwhile, there was big political uh, upheavals in the country. First, there were Mr. Papandru, uh, then, come, uh, then came a technocrat, uh, technocrat Prime Minister, Lucas Papadamos, and then came the elections. Uh, the elections on 6 May were inconclusive. The country is basically divided into two, two poles, austerity, uh, uh, parties which support austerity and parties which don't support austerity. This election actually threw the whole political uh, right-left into, uh, uh, into a big confusion. Uh, the anti-austerity parties, uh, the biggest bloc, Siraz, uh, came second, which was very, very surprising for many people across Europe. This, uh, this Siraz bloc, uh, uh, le its leader, Alexis Tsipras, says he does not support austerity and okay. has actually this week said that Germany is playing poker with entire Europe by introducing these austerity measures because austerity is one thing which the whole the, the lenders EU, ECB and IMF is asking for Greece only then they'll give you the, the, the bailout and the, uh, Alexis Cyprus also said that austerity is a disease which is killing Europe from inside out and uh, this Eurozone uh, the crisis is not threatening uh, Europe itself and the currency itself is threatening the entire world. Even uh, even e, uh, UK, which is not the part of uh, the Eurozone, said uh, it's a Bank of uh, England government, that is their uh, central bank, said that there's a storm coming from the continent, which can affect the uh, UK in a very bad manner. Uh, uh, right, uh, Siddhant. Ambassador Sikri, Sikri, let me bring you in and ask you the same question that I began by asking Siddhant. Mm -hmm. What happens if they don't get the second uh, bailout and what, uh, uh, the, does the, and what, how far, uh, p p real is the possibility of Greece withdrawing from the Eurozone? You know, the G Greeks have a contradictory attitude. I'm told that 80% of the Greeks want to stay in the Eurozone. Okay. But at the same time, they don't want any austerity measures. Mm -hmm. So they want to have their cake, eat their cake and have it too. Okay. That's not going to be easy because uh, the European Central Bank, the IMF, nobody has so much money to keep throwing into Greece. As uh, your correspondent just said, uh, they've already received two bailout packages. Uh, they haven't worked. And uh, basically, Greece is living beyond its means. Mm -hmm. When it uh, joined the uh, uh, Eurozone, European Eurozone uh, they thought it was one big party. Mm -hmm. You spend more, you consume more, you raise the wages, you increase the government spending, and somebody's going to pick up the bill. And they all felt, oh, you know, now we are part of the Eurozone, doesn't matter, we will not be uh, uh, let down. Nobody mm -hmm. is going to let us sink because it has huge implications. And to some extent, I think the Greeks were right, because uh, that is why they've got so many bailout packages. Mm -hmm. But beyond a point, the others, they, the others won't agree to keep and putting down. not enough money. Now what is happening is that uh, I think a lot of the Europeans are saying, you know, uh, let's firewall ourselves against a Greek default. Mm -hmm. So that at least let's save the other countries. Mm -hmm. Because if Greece is not willing to have the austerity measures and it is uh, going to default on its debts, then let's save the others at least. And uh, Greece also may be thinking, well, it's better to default. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, so who is the loser? Those who are holding the uh, Greek money, mm -hmm. uh, the, the the banks which True. have lent to Greece, mm -hmm. uh, the European taxpayers, 
uh, who are funding this uh, bailout. So, it is all a very complicated uh, situation, but I think uh, uh, it has implications which go far beyond Greece. Because uh, well, that's what we secretly will talk about those implications, especially how it is going to affect the rest of the pigs. But say the Greece, let's look at a situation on June seventeenth, where if there is a party elected which says that decides to pull out of the eurozone, do the Greeks end their misery with that? Do the Greeks end their misery with that? No, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I, 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 the Greeks just don't have enough money, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, their economy was is dependent on tourism and shipping. Now shipping has gone, and there's just tourism. It's not a manufacturing center. They haven't got that competitiveness. How are they going to compete that easily? So I, I think that no matter what happens, it's going to be tough days ahead for Greece. Now, I am sure that this is one of the issues that is going to be discussed at the G8 summit, which is beginning today. So, let us see what uh, you know, the collective wisdom of the leaders of the West comes up with. Okay. Siddhant, if I can come back to you and ask you uh, uh, what happens, what is the implications on the rest of the pigs, Portugal, Italy and Spain and of course, then also the rest of the Eurozone? Uh, the head of IMF, Christine Lagarde, said that uh, when Greece leaves the Eurozone, it will be a very expensive and a risky thing. Uh, it will affect the Eurozone in a very bad way. It will be a chaos. Euro will lose its credibility. And obviously, if a currency which is being used by 17 countries, of course, after Greece leaves, 16 countries loses its credibility. Obviously, the world economy will be badly impacted since Eurozone is a big market. Uh, India's uh, amongst uh, Eurozone is India's amongst the second biggest market uh, and if this uh, block goes, India will be badly impacted and I, I read somewhere if Eurozone collapses, it could also affect Obama's chances of re-election in the American uh, as the American president because obviously the American economy is very much interlinked with the Eurozone. All right. Uh, Ambassador Sikri, uh, let me take your reaction on it. So, how, what do you look at the uh, you know, way forward on this particular issue? Well, uh, I, I think that uh, Europe uh, will need to uh, strike some kind of a, a new grand bargain. Okay. Because uh, this kind of posturing which is going on, you know, Germany says you must uh, enforce austerity measures. Uh, France says, no, we must have growth and spending and Hollande is just uh, uh, one an election. I think both sides will have to compromise somewhere because even Merkel, her party has lost two very important elections, first in Schleswig-Holstein uh, a couple of weeks ago and now in the very important state of North Rhine-Westphalia. Uh, mm -hmm. So public opinion is, 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 is not for austerity measures because it hurts people directly. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and yet, the solutions are not easy. Mm -hmm. Now, Germany uh, uh, also has a problem because uh, Germany, uh, for Germany, Europe it's, is a very big market for its exports. So, you know, it is having a free ride. And if that market contracts, then Germany also suffers. True. 